Hello, hello, and welcome back to Inspirations, where you can find encouragement to inspire a life. This is Dana Susan Beasley of angelarts.biz, and I am recontinuing a series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Before I get started, if you would like to get my complete falling in love with the bridegroom devotional for free, check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet times and give you ample scriptures to spend in devoted study to our Lord and with our Lord. Now let's get to today's devotional. And I will start with prayer. Dear Lord, help us to understand you and to understand love and commitment and deep passion because you do value that. And I pray this in your precious name. Amen. So as I've been saying in my podcast, because last week I took a break from this devotional, and did Holy Week, but I've been saying that I'm going to start with Song of Solomon 2. And if you missed Song of Solomon 1, then go back to a week ago Saturday, and you will find that that podcast about Song of Solomon 1. So today I'm going to read Song of Solomon 2, and I'm going to read it in New International Version just because it's easier to understand. And friends, this is the word of the Lord. All right, so, oh, and I'm also going to tell you who is speaking. So, first of all, she is speaking. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. He, like a lily among thorns, is my dor- my is my darling among the young women. She, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest, is my beloved among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Let him lead me to the banquet hall, and let his banner over me be love. Strengthen me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, Peering through the lattice, my beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come, the cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit, the blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. And that is the second chapter of Song of Solomon. So from that passage, what can we glean that the bridegroom is like? Well, now remember that Song of Solomon is talking about Solomon and his bride, but it's also talking about God or Jesus and his bride. There's a deeper meaning to this. So Jesus, our bridegroom, is a rose of Sharon. He stands above all others. His love is delightful. His love is delicious. Think about that. It's, he says, taste and see that I am good. He is good. It tastes good. It doesn't leave a bitter taste in your mouth. It's delightful. It's like a banquet. That makes sense because there is such a thing as the the marriage supper of the lamb at the end of all time. He delights in you and me. He brings about. I'm trying to read this. He brings about faintness. Okay, I cannot actually read this writing. (laughs) So I'm trying to remember exactly where I said that. He brings about faintness. I am faint with love. Think about it. Think about like Mary Magdalene and the woman who, or there actually there were a couple of women who adorned Jesus with their hair, wiped with their tears, anointed him with spikenard. They were 
faint with love. The woman who has been, who is forgiven much, loves much. I know this because I am, I have definitely made a lot of mistakes. And, and so I have a lot of love for God because of his mercy. So, so that is definitely true of God. He embraces you and me. He's holy. He's strong. He comes with quickness. He brings joy. He belongs to his bride. And the groom, the uh, bride belongs to him. It's very comforting knowing that we belong to him. So that's what we know that the bridegroom is like from this passage. What is our response? Long to sit in his shade. You know, like Mary of Bethany, she wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus, and that's what she did. And Jesus did not rebuke her. In fact, he he advocated for her when Martha came and said, Well, don't you care, Jesus, that she's just sitting at your feet and I'm doing all the work? He actually kind of rebuked Martha for that. So sitting at in his shade, sitting at his feet is really, really important and like I said taste his delicious love the Bible says taste and see that I am good so so allow that to wash over you let him hold you look for him coming look for him in your life see his presence practice it come to him enjoy him want to be with him want him above all else let him see you he does see you I didn't believe this for years. Uh, I had a hard time understanding this, but he sees you. He sees me. And then don't let foxes ruin your love. Don't let it ruin your love for him. And then I'm for Jesus. And what are foxes? There are little resentments that can build and build and build. And yes, sometimes we're resentful of God. We think that God should have done this or God should have done that. And he doesn't meet our expectations because we don't understand. We can't see all ends. Let him delight in you and then want him above all else. And then you could, if you're married, then you can take this and you can apply this to your marriage. Long to sit in your husband's shade. Taste his delicious love. That's all I'm going to say. (laughs) Let him hold you. Look for him coming. Be excited. You know, when he comes home, if he works all day or works outside the home all day, then be happy when he does come home. Go to him. Enjoy him. Want to be with him above all else. Let him see you. Maybe, you know, do some before he comes home or, or you know, if you're going to go somewhere or, you know, do something special where he notices you. Wear something special. Put on some red lipstick or, you know, you, you can figure that out. And then... Most importantly, don't let the foxes ruin your love. So important in a marriage. It's so easy to let resentment build. But, you know, you need to check in daily and make sure that that doesn't happen, that you don't let the sun go down on your anger. And then let him delight in you and want him above all else, except, of course, God. (laughs) That goes without saying. But that those are important principles for a marriage. And remember that our relationship with God, or let me put it this way, our marriage, our marriage is a picture of our relationship with God. Okay, so how can I practically apply this to my life? I wrote, feast on him, that is Jesus. Feast on his word, listen to music, sit in his presence, soak him in, never look at this time with him as wasted or lazy. And the same with you and your significant other. It's kind of like a puppy, you know, they want to be in your presence. I know my dog and my cat, they, they feel most safe when they're and happy when they are beside me and on my lap and kissing me and all that stuff. Just think about it like that. And then lastly, What was God saying to me as I meditated? Take joy in each moment. See God right where I am. You you may not be where you want to be. I I know I have a long ways to go. 
there may be things in your life that are challenging and overwhelming and like you're facing giants, but, and there may be, there may be disturbing questions and, and you may be having a hard time fitting it all in. And I'm just speaking from my own experience here because that's how I feel, but never take each moment for granted both with our Lord and with your husband, with your kids, with any family. It's just so important because you don't know. You don't know when the last moment will be. And I, I firmly believe in living a life with no regrets. And so what do you need to do to do that? And I'm not going to tell you it's easy because it's, it's not. And there's some questions I have that I don't know the answers to yet, but I, I'm trusting, trying to trust that God will lead me and show me what to do with some predicaments that I'm in. So, but I can tell you that that Song of Solomon is a really, really wonderful book. It, it's a little daunting and sometimes quite strange. <laughs> you know, like her hair is like a flock of goats. <laughs> seems weird to us or a herd of goats or whatever it says but it's so valuable and if if you are married I highly suggest you spend some time with your husband reading this we my husband and I did that this morning and it was so wonderful I'll tell you it just brought us to a whole new level of intimacy and I'm not talking about just sex okay yes I said that word (laughs) so Anyway, I hope that inspires you and gives you some encouragement. And also, I just want to mention one more thing. There's a book called Hind's Feet on High Places by Hannah. I want to say Hernard, but I'm not say I'm not sure I'm saying right. It talks about it it brings out this whole stag idea, you know, Hind's Feet on High Places. It it brings it out in these characters. One of them is called Much Afraid. And it's such a wonderful book. She has a whole series of them. I highly suggest that you read that. All right. Well, I have rambled on enough. And I know I need to put this to bed, as it were, in the publishing realm and put myself to bed because I always do this late at night. Okay. So I am going to end in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this book of the Bible and how wonderful it is to understand the love relationship we have with you and with our spouses. Help us to see you, to not take your presence for granted, but to indeed taste and see that you are good. Thank you that you see us, that you are the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. And I pray all this in your precious name. Amen. All right, so that's all for the day. Tomorrow I'll continue my series on falling in love with the bridegroom. It will be Song of Solomon 3. And again, if you want the free devotional, check the link below. If you would like to go deeper into the scriptures, find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study, check that out also in the description box below. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.